friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in Chapter 3 talking about Agile testing methods, techniques and tools and we shall be looking forward to discuss some more questions from this particular chapter to understand better how to tackle the questions and the tips and tricks related to it. The next question for the day we have is question number 35 which is a uh, talking about the business procedures, processes, constraints related to acceptance criteria. So why is a user's knowledge of business procedure, processes, and constraints important when defining acceptance criteria for stories? I think we are bringing it back to that initial discussion that when it comes to collaborative user story creation, it's everyone's contribution in order to define a valuable user story at the same time, making sure that the acceptance criteria are defined for each story and also the acceptance criteria are achievable, meaningful, and certainly not vague. So all we are trying to ask you a question here is that why would somebody's knowledge about the business process, procedures, and various constraints to be taken into account while creating an acceptance criteria is significant for any story? So I think, uh, again, we may have a number of answers for this coming to our mind that uh, we can talk about writing more effectively or making sure that user story is achievable or making sure that one can understand and implement it. So there could be 100 ways to answer this you know, question from our understanding of this uh, perspective, but make sure that you, in such questions, you go through the options and pick up the best option relevant to that of the question. So in that context, the option A says because it helps define the security required in the final product, security, right? Security is a non-functional characteristics. If I'm talking about business procedure, processes and constraints, they are more from the expectation of the system or what exactly the domain is all about, what the product should do, how it should function and etc. Whereas security is more of like uh, the non-functional quality characteristics of an application and uh, having knowledge of such business processes and constraints does not secure your product. You need to deploy security policies and procedures related to security and define many other things. If you uh, really understand security, then we do have like, you know, the firewalls, encryptions, and several other mechanisms to be deployed in order to secure a system. So that's absolutely not the right answer. B says because it is needed to define the business rules that must be supported by the product. Makes sense, of course, because this is what the product expectation is and uh, a user story should always be written and their acceptance criteria should help determine that what should the product do at the end of the day. And from a business perspective, which means that the end user and customer perspective, what the product should be able to do. So it is making more sense compared to A. C, because it is used to ensure the efficiency of developed code. Uh, no, efficiency of developed code can be done with help of static analysis tools, which is investigation and evaluation tools, and they help you identify the adherence of coding standards or identifying anomalies and defects related to code implementations or even talking about secure coding practices can all be evaluated using that. So it's not like having a knowledge of business procedure and processes would help you to ensure the efficiency of the code. In fact, efficiency can further be extended to the level of testing, that if my code is efficient enough, or if I'm taking this into other sense, that is quality characteristics, efficiency is more from the performance point of view. So no matter what different parameters you think of this word efficiency, all would conclude one way that that's not something to do with how much you know about the business requirements or how much you know about the process and constraints and that too, especially coming to the acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria are more implemented from the perspective of testing so that the testing team can validate it and make sure that the code has been implemented accordingly, but not the efficiency. D, because it is needed to understand all the external interfaces of the software, no. External interfaces could be uh, different systems and their expectations and requirements could be different than what you are building. So when we talk about systems of system, then each system has their own set of specific requirements and uh, to write the acceptance criteria and user story, you don't talk about other applications. So it's relevant and respective to each product individually. 
So in that context put together, the right answer here is B, because it is needed to define the business rules that must be supported by the product is what you get as a benefit uh, of knowing the business procedures, processes, constraints in order to define a very, very meaningful acceptance criteria for the user stories. Moving on to the next, we have question number 36 and it takes you towards the same kind of discussion that is on acceptance criteria but from a different perspective. You are reviewing the acceptance criteria for a story. One of these types, all window must conform to the corporate approved color scheme. That means at organization level, there is a color scheme being defined or at corporate level, there is a color scheme being defined and we must make sure that all the windows are uh, conforming to that standard of the color uh, for an application. In what way does this statement help improve the testability of the story? Now that's again an incredible type of question where I may not have an upfront answer when I'm just looking at the question because I always suggest people that they should always have some answer in their mind before they start looking at option because that would guide you well. But these type of questions are the questions where you can't even think of any ready-made or predefined answers in your mind because this totally depends on what options have been provided to you. So please do not take a chance or do not try to burden your brain in terms of understanding what exactly it is. So let's have a look what the options are trying to say. Option A says it explains the functional behavior that the software must supply. Uh, no, not at all because uh, when we're talking about the color coding and standards, it does not uh, talks about the behavior of the system, right? Because it's just a pattern, just a theme which is supposed to be followed at the application level throughout. So it does not explain the functional behavior that the software must supply. B, it provides a realistic use case for the software. Now, that's again a bunch of functionalities or bunch of action items put together is what you call it as a use case, which is also a functional driven thing, but not a color standard or theme standard. It defines the business rules that must be implemented. So it's not again the business rules because business rules are more from the business or system perspective. So that's also not there. D says it supplies a constraint for the solution. Yes, that's one of the factor. That's it for the implemented solution. It's not going to drive the functionality. It's not going to implement the requirement. It's not a technical skill or technical asset of the product. Rather, it's more of a factor which I should take into account in order to make sure that the system is well implemented. So in that context put together, the right answer here is D, it supplies a constraint for the solution because this didn't, discussion had a statement that all windows must conform to the corporate approved color scheme, which is just a color scheme, not a functionality, not a behavior, not an expected output. Right, moving on to the next one, that's question number 37. And what is the purpose of continuous integration tools? I think for this, you can have a ready-made answer. Continuous integration tools helps you to build and deploy modules and builds. So in that, uh, we just have to be very, very specific to the definitions of each and every tool, what we have covered in the syllabus. I think the last topic gives you all the introduction to a variety of tools, what we make use of in agile methodology and uh, we must at least have a few liners about each of the tool that what are the capabilities and what is the use and significance of each of these tool when it comes to the agile industry and your day-to-day -day work. So they can talk about the, you know, ALM application lifecycle management. They can talk about wikis. They can talk about instant messaging and whatnot. Similarly, we have virtualization tools and many other things. So here they asked you about continuous integration. So let's look at the options. Option A says to support black box testing. No. B to provide a basis for structured reviews of the requirements. Uh, no, because that's a white box testing, of course. And C says to support the daily build and deployment of software. Yes, of course. And D to track the task of the team. For that, we have a task board. And uh, Jira is one of the examples. So put together, the right answer in this case is C, to support the daily build and deployment of the software, which is quite often and easily done with help of continuous integration 
tools within agile methodology so that's all what we had from this particular tutorial and indeed from this section you would come to know that we have one more tutorial remaining uh, from this entire series so just stay tuned for that and we'll come back to you with another set of three questions to complete this set as well so thank you so much and uh, that's all what we had from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then, till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning